let's work through this question together. There's a lot of interesting things here. First of all, put the data down into a column format so we can see what it looks like. Construct a time series plot. So we want to go to Insert, highlight the data. We want to just see what type of trend uh, we're likely to see here. Scatter, and then this one which is straight lines and markers. And this looks kind of horizontal, doesn't it? There's no uh, trend. If we were to draw a line through it, it would go through there. So this is probably going to be a stationary data set, in which case we can use um, different sorts of smoothing, uh, exponential smoothing, as well as um, moving average. So we have constructed a time series plot, and we can say it's stationary. Develop a three-week moving average for this time series. Compute the mean squared error and a forecast for a week eight. So go to data, data analysis, and it's asking for a moving average. So select, where the heck is moving average? There we go. Here's moving average. Go OK. Now the input range is the value. Um, I had labels because I put value there. And it asks for a three-week moving average. So put a three as the interval. Uh, I'm going to put it right next to this data here. And uh, I'm going to have a chart output. And that's all I need. So go OK. And uh, the chart, where's the chart? It's gone off anyway. It doesn't matter. Now we've got a three-week moving average. One, two, and three have been taken up in calculating the averages. So that means that we want to put this data cut right next to 12. Because the first three weeks were taken up in calculating this moving average. So clear away the stuff that's uh, not necessary, that NA and all that rubbish. OK, that can go. Now let's just see, just for fun, how Excel has done this. So a three-week moving average is going to be 24 plus 13 plus 20 divided by 3. So let's just try that. Equals 24 plus 13 plus 20. And we said for 3, so divide by 3. And there's 19 isn't it? That's 19, which is exactly the forecast that was given. OK, so that's what it's done. And that's what we're going to use later for uh, when we'd have to do a, a prediction ourselves. Now, we want to um, calculate, it says compute MSE, the mean squared errors. So we want, first of all, a column uh, which we can call errors. And that is going to be 12 minus 19. So go equals 12, that's the cell where you've got the 12, minus the forecast. So that, in that case, it was off by 7. Drag it down, and then we've got the forecast for the others. Now we want to square it. equals and then that and then we put a, like a hat 2 so that's 49 and so all these numbers will be positive numbers because they're squared that's what we want now we want to add it up and so it's 110 it's 110 the mean squared error is going to be 1 2 3 Four. four of those observations. So it's going to be equals 110 divided by 4. So the mean squared error is 27.5 in this case, 27.5, when we used a three-week moving average. Now it's asking us to compute, uh, OK, sorry, one more thing, forecast for week 8. So week 8 is going to be here, isn't it? It's going to be here, this one. This is what we don't know. 
So what we can do is we can go 19 plus 23 plus 15 and that will give us the forecast. The three weeks just like we checked it before so it's going to be equals 19 plus 23 plus 15 divided by 3. So the forecast for week 8 is 19. It's 19. I'll just clear that because otherwise it's going to get in the way when we do the next um, question. All right, now let's do um, an exponential smoothing forecast for this time series. So go back to data, data analysis, and we want exponential smoothing. Now the input range is the values again. And the damping factor, the damping factor is the alpha, is 1 minus alpha, 1 minus alpha. So don't make up, this is easy to get this wrong. So we've got an alpha of 0.2, so therefore under damping factor we want to put 0 0.8. We've got labels, and uh, let's put the output range um, here, say. and go OK. All right, so here we get our exponential smoothing. And uh, now we only lost one. We only lost one observation. I'm just going to move it uh, closer by here, right next to, uh, the, here we, we just put it here. OK, now uh, what I want to do is to do um, a mean squared error thing exactly in the same way. OK, so we want to first of all make a column of errors, E-R-R-O-R-S. And so we're still subtracting it from the original observations which are here. So go equals and then 13 minus... 24, that's the cell number with 24 in. So minus 11, drag it down. And that gives us the uh, errors at each time. Just like we did before, we want to square it. The hat on for make it squared. And then calculate each one and just like we did before add it up and now we've got how many observations one two three four five six we've got six so the mean squared error is going to be equals and then that sum divided by six so the mean squared error for the um, exponential smoothing is quite a lot larger than the mean squared error when we just use a moving average. So in this case I would prefer to use the mean squared error is lower for the um, moving average forecast. Let's try now to change the mean squared error, see if we can get a better or lower mean squared error if we do the exponential forecast again, but this time we change the alpha to uh, 0.4 to 0.4. So back to data analysis, exponential smoothing, and let's change the alpha to 0.4. So that means that the damping factor is going to be 1 minus 0.4, which is 0.6. I'm going to put the um, output range here in, uh, let's put it here, then it's out because the screen is getting a bit cramped. Okay, so now we've got, these are the figures for um, a damping factor representing an alpha of 0.4. So let's copy the data down so it's all close to each other. We don't need that NA because that was the first uh, thing it used. So let's calculate again the errors.
There they go, and then let's square them. Add it up. And then uh, divide by um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Divide by 6. So we get a slightly smaller uh, mean squared error, but it's still, it's still larger than the three-week moving average. So the three-week moving average provides a more accurate forecast. Thank you.